In the previous video, we used the utility mode of the ChemCat heat exchanger simulation to control the utility rate through the exchanger. Now we've added controllers to the system. The controller, as you can, as ChemCat reminds you, is a mathematical controller. It's not a PNID dynamic controller. It's just a mathematical operation that occurs within the flow sheet. If you look at the controller palette, you'll see there are several graphical representations. These all are functionally identical. So let's move into the exchanger design. Let's look first at the benzene exchanger. Let me zoom in just a little bit so it's a little easier to see. And what we want to do is use this controller to manipulate the tower water flow rate to get the exit temperature we need from the exchanger. So the first thing we need to do is edit the unit operation properties. In this case, we're going to let the ChemCAD unit operation control the utility outlet temperature. So that would be the temperature of stream 6. That should be 50 Celsius, not 60 as I erroneously entered in the last video. We have no specification for stream 2 because we're going to be letting ChemCAD manipulate that. So the other thing we have to do is take this exchanger out of utility mode. So now we have the right number of specifications, and it's time to define our controller. Going into the controller properties, when you insert a controller, it first shows up in the off condition. We're going to move it into feedback because we're going to be manipulating a variable upstream of the control variable. What we want to control is the flow rate of stream 5. or actually, yeah, the mass flow rate. And what we'll do is also remind ChemCAD that this is a mole or mass unit. We're trying to have stream two temperature meet the specification of 40 Celsius, so 40 in temperature units. In the same way, for the xylene exchanger, we'll come in, we'll take it out of utility mode, We'll get rid of the specification for the process stream because that's the one we're going to control. We're going to set the parameters for the controller by turning it on, controlling for stream seven, the flow rate. We're going to set the flow rate so that the temperature of stream four is 90 Celsius, 90 in, in the temperature units. So let's say OK. We'll run the simulation. It runs with no errors or warnings. You can see we've got the right cooling water exit temperature, the right steam exit temperature and condition, and that our exit streams have the right temperatures. I'd like to show you one other thing, which is why this, this capability is useful. Let's go back in and, and take a look at the exchanger sizing. Okay, ChemCAD notices we've made a change to the properties. We've changed the specifications. So let's resize and basically just go recalculate. No issues there. So we'll exit. Since we haven't really changed anything significant, the sizing hasn't changed very much. Uh, same thing for the xylene exchanger. I'll edit the unit up. Excuse me, for the xylene exchanger. We'll go in, we'll do the sizing for shell and tube exchanger. And that worked fine also. So now we have two sized heat exchangers in the system. Let me zoom out so we can look at these both together. You might remember, let's go back and take a look at the sizing results. Okay, and what we've actually got in our general specifications is the type of exchanger. Uh, we can also look at specifics of the exchanger geometry. We've got four tube passes. We've got uh, specified tube length, uh, etc. So we fixed that. And if we look at the summary, res summary results, what you can see is that we actually have more heat transfer area than we need for the process. So if you were actually running this with the same process variables, we're not actually quite sure what the uh, process results are going to be. 
So what, what we're going to do now is put the heat exchanger into a different mode, into the rigorous simulation shell and tube mode. So you can see I have no specifications anymore. That's because ChemCAD is going to take the mechanical design of the exchanger to calculate UA for the given flow rates. And then we'll do the energy and material balances around the exchanger. So I'll say OK. We get this dialog box. And I need now to put the general specifications into rating mode. Because now we're actually rating the ability of this exchanger to do the heat transfer duty we've required. And we'll do the same thing for the steam heater. We'll switch it to the shell and tube simulation. Switch it to rating mode also. OK, and I've got some warnings. That's based on just the mechanical design of the exchanger. Uh, we'll not worry about these for now. Say OK. Uh, we have two specified exchangers. We have inlet rates. Let's see what the controllers do with this now. Again, we have the warning about the exchanger dimensions. We'll ignore that. You can see now it's going through the pressure drop and heat transfer calculations for the two exchangers. And when we're done with this, you can see that the cooling water actually comes out a little bit warm because the exchangers actually got a little bit more area than we needed to meet the target exit temperature. And the same thing for this uh, steam heater. Right, wrong thing. If we look at the streams coming out, you can see that we've significantly subcooled the exiting steam. That's not necessarily a problem for us, but something we would need to take a look at in, in a more detailed design. What we do know is that these exchangers do have enough area to accomplish the heat transfer task we assign them. And we also now know something closer to the true thermal performance of these exchangers is. I'll save a copy of this converged flow sheet again for you so that you can compare your results with have fun with this.